Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, how are you being treated? Well, I've got an email here from a guy who, I don't know, I guess about a year, year and a half ago, I did an email of his in a previous newsletter. And this particular guy used to go out and get just totally shit-faced and fuck his dates up. And... The title of that previous video newsletter was Alcohol, Liquid Courage, or Attraction Killer. So he gives us an update and he's cut back in the drinking. He doesn't get so shit-faced, blackout kind of drunk or the next day he's going, damn, I wish I hadn't have said that. And he also brings up some interesting points in his email and you could tell that just from applying what's in my book and having experiences in the dating world – He's starting to notice and be more observant of how people in his life are treating him. And what I like about this email is you can tell he stands up for himself. If someone treats him like a second class citizen, he's not going to put up with it. Today I went to the grocery store. I had had to get some things and there was this couple that was by the entrance of the the grocery store. It was really one of the large grocery stores that we have in Florida. And she's cussing at her boyfriend. I don't know if it's her – probably just a boyfriend. But she's like yelling at him. Oh, you're fucking so-and-so. And yeah, yeah. Just going at him and bitching and complaining about the fact he's not being faithful to her. And he's fucking this girl and that girl. And the guy's got a look on his face like he's got no fucks to give. He really doesn't care. And so obviously people are walking in and out of the grocery store and they're – you know, listening to her because she's being really belligerent. And what's interesting is you, you see a lot of people do that. It's like here's this woman who's dating this guy who is cheating on her and he has an I don't give a fuck attitude about it. And does she have any self-respect or self-love? No, because she sits there and she berates this guy and busts his balls and yells at him for being unfaithful because instead of just saying – Hey, that's fine. If you're going to fuck somebody else, you ain't going to be fucking me anymore. And just leaving his ass. And that's what most people tend to do. Whether it's a friendship that's screwing you over or a business partner that's screwing you over or a coworker, people just put up with mistreatment from other people. And remember, no one will ever do or say anything to you that isn't a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves in a moment. And also, no one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. And so this particular woman, just by the very fact that – because he obviously knows that she's going to bitch and complain about it. But she still ain't leaving his ass. She's still sticking around thinking that berating him and being pissed off at him is somehow going to change who he is. Instead of seeing the situation for what it is and saying, fuck you, dude. I'm out of here. You can have that girl all to yourself. So with that in mind, I thought it was a good little story that I just happened to see in the real world as I was getting ready to do this video. So I have a quote that I wrote and then we're going to go through this guy's email and see what he's learned because he's obviously come a long way and I really like how he handled this situation because he's in a – he meets this girl out on a date and they meet at this pub. I assume he's probably in the UK and there's – she apparently knows other guys. There's like three other dudes just constantly hitting on her, talking to her. He goes to the bathroom and he comes back to her. They're just there. And, and he really did a good job of just being observant and seeing how this particular woman was without really saying a lot. So the quote says, you can't control or predict what life is going to bring your way, but you always have the power to decide what it means to you. Successful people tend to look for the gift in every experience, failure, rejection, challenge, setback and things that simply do not turn out like they expect so they can learn and get better. The one thing that all high achievers have in spades is a positive attitude. No matter what happens, they tend to look at everything that happens as being for the best and the way things are supposed to be. Unsuccessful people tend to dwell on their problems kind of like the woman I was talking about today. She's sitting there dwelling and complaining about the fact that the guy's not faithful as if that's going to somehow change him or make her situation better. So she complains about it but she does nothing to fix it 
And then when she talks to her girlfriends or her friend, friends and family, she says, oh, guess what? So-and-so is cheating on me again. And that's how she, part of the way she meets her need for love and connection in a dysfunctional way because she tells all of her girlfriends and her friends that her boyfriend's cheating on her. And they go, oh, you poor thing. Oh, he's such a rotten guy. But partly they enable her behavior because they, because a good friend would just say, look, the guy's not going to be faithful to you. You either accept the fact that he's going to cheat or you go find somebody who places a high value on loyalty, communication, and commitment because that guy ain't – and he had the, he's got the no fucks to give look on his face. So that tells me personally everything I need to know about that situation. I don't even know them. All I had to do was listen to the two of them interact. He wasn't really saying much. His, the look on his face and his body language and his physiology told me everything. He really doesn't fucking care. But she's just going to sit there and put up with it and put up with it and put up with it and who knows how long it will last. I'm sure everybody watching this video knows somebody that's in a situation like that whether it's a job they hate or they hate their boss, or they hate where they work or they hate their business partners or somebody in their family and yet they keep hanging out with the same people and they complain about it but they don't do anything to change it. Unsuccessful people tend to dwell on their problems while successful people tend to focus on and look for things to be grateful for. Whatever you focus your brain on will expand in your life and your perception of it. Cultivating a positive attitude, outlook and worldview is one of the smartest decisions you can make that will improve the overall quality of your life and what you are able to achieve. Successful people believe that they can and will succeed eventually. Unsuccessful people have convinced themselves that failure and disappointment is simply the way life is supposed to be. Again, just like this couple I saw today, she believes that that's just the way things are. Maybe she grew up in an environment where she saw the same kinds of behavior and now that she's an adult, she's in the same kinds of abusive types of relationships that she probably saw growing up. Not everybody makes those same choices but quite frankly, most people tend to. The reality is most people tend to major in minor things in life and it's just the way it is. And if you're a high achiever or a high achiever in the making, you just cannot tolerate being around those kinds of people. You've got to be around positive, optimistic people that are trying to better themselves. And this guy here, as we're going to go through his email, he's doing a good job of that. So let's go through his email. He says, hi, coach. Remember me? You were dead on correct with regard to my indecisiveness when I contacted you the last time. You answered an email in the video, alcohol, liquid courage, or attraction killer. Well, as I like to say many times and in many videos, I've been saying for years, I might not always be right, but I'm never wrong. Thanks so much. I've learned so much from your book and your video posts. I'd like to update you on my progress as a means to say thank you as well to verify that your advice is worthwhile. Number one. I've been refraining from drinking before dating. I'm past it. I'm more confident due to increased dating and overall effort. And even better yet, I've refrained from liquid courage before public speaking. So it sounds like you were definitely using alcohol as a crutch. Brave juice as we used to call it in our 20s. Trust me, that's a huge improvement especially since fear of public speaking for me and in many people is right up there with fear of death. That is true. Most people look at public speaking as just like one of the most terrifying things they could potentially do. I never really thought of it as a big deal. I remember first couple times we had to do presentations in class when I was in high school and we had to do a lot of them. I didn't really think it was that big a deal. But that's just me. Number two, just tonight, I'm still a bit pleased with myself. <laughs> that reminds me of my girlfriend from the UK. Every, every once in a while when we talk on the phone, we'll be talking about something and I'll be excited about it. And she'll go, Qua, are you pleased? Are you pleased? <laughs> Cracks me up. Hence the quick email. I ran into a similar situation that's in your book. 
It's hilarious how your experiences are so relevant. Well, it's like my book, the, the different experiences that I put down or that I've had, I mean pretty much most guys and girls for that matter are going to find themselves in similar situations and understanding what's really going on just like being able to observe that couple as I was walking in the grocery store today. You don't ever feel like you're bamboozled or you're scratching your head going, well, I don't understand what this means. It becomes pretty obvious and that gives you a leg up on everybody because quite frankly, most people won't spend the time to sit here and listen to a shaved head motherfucker like myself bloviate about important topics that we all really need to know. A woman with whom I set a date to meet at a local pub spent most of the evening paying attention to other male individuals, at least three of them that were overly eager for her attention. Great. So you went up, went to a place and there were cock blockers there. And you could tell it's like guys like that, they think because they know her. It's like they have zero respect for the fact that you're on a date with her and they're just focused on themselves and trying to rip her off from you. And they have no clue. Not the kind of guys you want to have as friends. And those particular guys, they're in a scarcity mindset. Well, she's the only girl I know. Oh my God, I better – I better try extra hard. Maybe I can buy her a drink. Maybe I'll ask her out for the 50th fucking time. It was so obvious to me that the men approaching her were needy and overzealous. It didn't bother me too much and I realized that she knew all of them quite well and I could also see their true intentions as they approached her. And it's great to be quiet in a situation like this because you can kind of get a feel for how is this woman going to be when you're not around. Because here you are on a date with her and she's an entertaining energy from other guys who obviously are interested. And quite frankly, she ain't stupid. She knows that these guys are interested. That's the kind of thing that the red flag goes up. You say, well, hmm, hmm. Probably loyalty is something that really is not a big deal to this woman. I mean it's pretty rude and disrespectful to go on a date and then just sit there and chit chat with other guys that you know in front of your date and ignore your date. That's just stupid. But judging by the way these guys were, she probably has a lot of these kinds of men in her life that are like that. So she's used to getting her way and walking all over guys. Most men are pushovers. You don't believe me? Get together 10 random women and ask them. How many guys have you met in your life that actually have a fucking spine and will stand up to you and they'll go, I met one a couple years ago. To be honest, some of them reminded me of myself, the past self, the insecure self. Actually, the only thing that really bothered me was the woman either failed to recognize their advances, I seriously doubt that, towards her, which I doubt, or she just didn't care. Probably a little bit of both. She didn't give a fuck. She had no fucks to give because she's used to getting away with that. Or perhaps she wanted to see how it affected me. Possibly, but going on a date and a, a girl's going to treat you that way is like. Well, in short, I became bored. Hang out, have fun, hook up. It's not hang out, be bored, and then maybe hopefully you'll hook up later. The whole idea is to create great memories, and that certainly ain't a great memory. That's the kind of thing that makes you go, well, it's getting kind of late. I got to run. It's been real. Also, when I went to the men's room, I thought to myself, how would Corey handle this situation? Check, please. How do I just say, hey, you know, I'm kind of tired. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bolt. It's been great. August, I'll see you later. And she could stay there with the guys. Chit chat. I would never, I'd never call a girl like that again. It gave me time to reflect on what I have read. And I realized I have too much respect for myself and when on a date, I expect the woman to treat me as well as I intend to treat her. Exactly. You want to spend your time with somebody who's excited you're there. Not somebody that's like, oh, wow, I got four guys that are interested in me. How great this is. Fuck that noise. So just like in your book regarding the time you went to a club and the woman was hardly around to be seen, I decided to leave. Yeah, I wrote about that in one of my books. This was something that happened in my early 20s. 
this girl asked me to meet meet her at her father's club it was like kind of like a country bar nightclub kind of thing they did the line dance and all that kind of shit and a lot of attractive girls there with cowboy boots on it's like every time i started talking there was some dude or group of dudes would come up and then she'd wander off with them and my buddy's like dude she ain't into you let's get the fuck out of here and i was like i was all bummed that night and i was like all right well he's right because my buddy that was with me he was really good with women and he had a, he had re, over the years he had really fucking hot girlfriends. So I always listened to him when he had something to say about that. And then the next morning my phone rings. She's like, "Where? What happened to you? I looked everywhere." I'm going, "Huh?" I didn't know enough back then to put two and two together. I didn't fi- I couldn't understand. What, it was totally confusing to me, but it made total sense. Scarcity creates value, and so this woman's got tons of dudes wink, swinging their dicks in her face. And look how she treats them all. Eh. I politely paid for the drinks and stated to her that I was leaving. I had three pints. That was enough. I wasn't angry. Yes, I was a bit displeased. Are you pleased? Are you displeased? But I can't control how others behave. Anyway, this is the sweet part. As you might suspect, she ended up texting me several times after I left apologizing for having so many distractions hmm and went from her not respecting you at all to that guy disappeared because the other three guys are probably still there buying her drinks and begging her to spend time with them thinking they were making some progress because you had left then what happens she's calling you apologizing amazing how that works he stood up for himself like i'm not getting treated like i'm valued here so give her the gift of missing me and she said she enjoyed my company. Yeah, she hardly talks to you. With, I really enjoyed your company. But seriously, words come easy. No, I didn't play games. I just texted her back. No worries. Have a good night. And I would never call or text her again after that. I might decide to go on another date with her. But here's the thing. I feel so good right now. I feel like I'm on top of the world. Why? Because I didn't let it bother me. In other words, you didn't lose your shit. Because quite frankly, a woman like that, she didn't deserve you losing your shit. I'm not supposed to fight for her attention. You are absolutely fucking correct on that, my friend. That's ridiculous. I'm so confident now. I figure a real woman, a woman that truly wants to be with her date and engage in conversation with her date would make an effort absolutely a true statement and she didn't could i have handled myself better i'm not sure how dude you did fucking great i wouldn't change anything honestly i couldn't find the correct words i wanted to say hey why did we meet you're going to let these men distract you but i just observed be objective right yeah because remember you're also putting the other person on probation you want to see what she's like is she respectful because a woman who has a good relationship with her mom and her dad ain't going to fucking pull some shit like that. She's not going to have other dudes swinging their dicks in her face while she's on a date with another guy. She's going to say, hey, I'm on a date. This is so-and-so and you know, it's nice seeing you guys but I'm going to get back to my date. But a woman who doesn't give a fuck, doesn't care about loyalty, this is the way she's going to behave. And so you go out on one date. I don't know how many dates you've been out with this girl but at the end of the day, it's like – why would you want to go out with somebody like this again? If you, unless you just want to go for practice. But I'd never call or text her again. And if she does reach out, have her meet you on your side of town, someplace that's close to where you are. If I could have done a better job handling this situation, please advise. I wouldn't do anything different, dude. But let this be a testament that I'm enjoying dating so much more after reading your book and following your videos. No, I'm not perfect, but I'm leaps and bounds in the right direction. Yeah, you're not getting shit-faced and blowing things like the first time around when I answered your your first email that you sent me. So remember, what do I always say? Just try to get a little better each and every day. And he's obviously been doing that. And if you go back to the original video that he did, I don't know, like a year, year and a half ago, whenever it was, which it was, it was titled Alcohol attraction liquid courage or attraction killer if you want to google that it'll also be 
on the article on my website for those of you who want to see where this guy was, what he was doing when he first emailed me. And obviously you hear where he is now, which is great. The idea is that this is your journey. Some people may go faster than this. Other people may go a lot slower and other people might be at the same pace you are. The idea is it's like a game of golf. You're just really playing against yourself. Just try to get a little better each and every day. That's all you can do. And if you'd like to get my help personally helping you get a little better each and every day, you can go to my website, click the products tab, top of your screen on any page and book whichever coaching option works best for you. I highly encourage you to get the audio version of my book which is now available on audible.com. It's also in the iTunes store if you haven't gotten it already. And I will talk to you soon.